All right, Slick, so what are we covering today in terms of years? Ooh, excellent. Let's do it. All right, so 1996, um, that was a good year. Um, I was starting to figure out musically what I was going to. I was still doing covers. Um, music trend was great in terms of the was, rock wasn't the, and metal wasn't the, the forefront of what was out there at that time, but we still had bands making music, which was, you know, Kiss, ACDC. You know, they were still making the, the music and it was good. It was really good. Judas Priest did a couple good albums with uh, Ripper Owens. But ACDC did a really great album called Ball Breaker that was produced by Rick Rubin, who did a lot of the Slayer stuff. And boy, he, uh, he really nailed the sound, really did a good job on their album. And the tour, oh, the tour was great. The tour was at uh, Skydome, now known as the Rogers Center in Toronto. It was a big venue, and it was great. I mean, I went to see that, and I was like, holy smokes, this is awesome. Uh, really, really good set, really good tight band at that point. And I believe, and I might be wrong about this, but it wasn't Malcolm who was playing rhythm guitar on that tour, it was his uh, nephew Stevie. But I could be wrong about that, it might have been the next tour. But anyways, um, still a really good show, uh, really well done. In terms of other you know, bands and stuff. I think the big one too that year was uh, definitely, it was Kiss. Kiss reunited with uh, the originals, Peter Chris and Ace Frehley. And honestly, at the Sky Dome, that was actually really good. Uh, Steph and I went, okay, so Steph and I went to see them with the makeup. So I think I was, she was Jean, I was Paul. And uh, it was really good. Uh, good set, they seemed really good on stage they seemed happy to be with each other and they were really tight really really good sound um, great night great sound uh, I mean I was glad that I got to see the originals again uh, which a lot of other KISS fans thought this is great um, in terms of my wife staff I, she wasn't my wife yet we weren't married yet we were we were actually engaged and that's another story that is in this episode. Um, but it was uh, it was good, it, and she seemed really impressed. She got it. She she got why I really love this band and what was so special about these guys. So uh, it was, that was a good tour. There was a couple other really good albums. Definitely Motorhead's Overnight Sensation. What a solid solid album. Unfortunately, they didn't tour for that one in Canada. They didn't come to Canada for that one, which was strange. I don't remember why that was, but they did come the next year in 97, yeah, 97 or 98, um, which was fine, but good album. Uh, if you're a Motorhead fan and you like all styles of Motorhead, all lineups, this one you should totally check out. Really good. Civil War, um, Love Can't Buy Money. Uh, overnight Sensation, Broken, all good songs, all really good solid songs. Um, and then there was another album that came out that year that was a big huge band for me. That was ZZ Top, Rhythming. Rhythming was a really good solid bluesy type album with the with the harmonica. And actually I went to see them do a tour there at, uh, at the Molson Amphitheater and they were opened uh, by Cheap Trick. Cheap Trick opened them up and that was a really good that was a really good tour. I was really impressed by that. That was that was awesome. And so, you know, really good stuff. Uh, really, really good albums. Good a good tour for ZZ Top. I mean, they were just at their, you know, they were just at their best again. Great sound. Um, played a few of the songs from that album. So it was good. Uh, and pretty influential and still is actually for that one, Rhythming. Rhythming is a slightly different ZZ Top record that you would usually, you know, be able to hear uh, usually from them. But this this was good. Um, yeah, that was a, that was a good tour. I think the big 
songs that I had written, I think it was Telfs from the Journey. I was doing a, a few of the uh, instrumentals. I wasn't really doing much with lyrics or vocals. I wasn't doing any vocals actually. And I think I was still trying to search out what's the sound, what, what am I doing, and can I find the right people. I was still searching out for that. Even though I was in uh, third year animation, and I was almost done, uh, I was graduating in May of uh, 96. I did do the music soundtrack for my animation film, uh, The Making of a Capital, the capital M. <laughs> it was a fun thing to do. I did do the music on that, and that was that was interesting. I thought, eh, maybe there's something there. Did that on the Tascam 4 track, and then then laid it on to the, uh, to the track on the film that I made. So, there we go. Um, not much happening. Uh, I think with everything happening that year, and it was a big year actually, it was a life-changing year actually, because, uh, well, I got married. And uh, that's another story for this episode, so you'll see that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, there we are. Hello. Take one. I went so far away. That's better, isn't it? It is better. I don't know. Okay, so, so 1996. So that's the year that, uh, of course, biggest change in my life. Well, 94 was a big change in my life because I met Stephanie. This is the Stephanie Boone Sigansky. Yes, this is the Stephanie Boone that writes the songs, some of the songs that are in the catalog. Saw the Death, uh, Night something, I forget what it's called, but anyway. That's really nice. Oh man, <laughs> take two, take two. Um, yeah, Stephanie Boone. She is the one that writes some of the songs in the catalog, right? Like Solid Death, uh, Metal Medicine. Remember that one? That was a good one. That was a really good one, actually, wow. Um, so 96, 96 I uh, had another big event in my life. I married this woman here in October 12th of 96. Best day of my life <laughs> and best thing that ever happened to me. Uh, never thought I'd get another chance to meet somebody perfect and supportive and all the other stuff that comes with it. So there she is, she's the one. And uh, I told the story in the other, in the other uh, episode about how we ran down Young Street to mm -hmm. HMV. Mm -hmm. She didn't wince, she didn't run away. She said, okay, that's when you know you have the right one. There you go. That's that story. I like Planet Cool. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, so uh, in 96, we also went to see Kiss mm -hmm. with the full makeup, with the original band. We were at the uh, Sky Dome, and that's where we saw Kiss with the full makeup and everything. And we actually wore makeup. We did. We did, yeah. I was June Simmons, of course. And I was, I think I was either Ace or Paul. I can't remember. Do you remember what I the was? The star. The star. That would be Paul. So I was Paul Stanley that night. That was cool. We had a great night. That was awesome. That was a, that was a good was night. Fun. That was good. Fun. And our, our wedding was perfect. It was an, on a farm. We had a tent. We had everybody there. It was great. And uh, actually, that night, I actually played Tales from the Journey, which was an instrumental, because up to that point, I wasn't doing a whole lot of vocal-type songs at that point. So I was doing a lot of instrumentals, and I played that at the wedding, actually, Tales from the Journey. It was beautiful. She I liked it. it. Yeah, it was special. And uh, we went to Niagara on the Lake for our honeymoon. We did. That was good. That was a really good. Uh, that was a really good time. That was actually perfect. When things come in line and everything's perfect, it just happens and it was. It's perfect. <laughs> She's perfect. You see? No, seriously. When you have the right person with you and you have the right kind of support, um, it makes it a little easier when you're doing things. S Stephanie over here has always been a huge supporter of the music and a huge supporter of me pursuing it and getting better at it. There you go. Um, so Sorry, I mean... <laughs> uh, well, you couldn't ask for anything better. When you have the right person and they're supporting you, it makes it a little easier with everything in life. 
But uh, yeah, no, 96 was a good year. It was a good year. I actually uh, also proposed in 96 in February on her birthday. In February of 96, it's her birthday and I proposed to her. And the way I did it was I was in animation, as the story goes, I was in animation. So I decided to animate the proposal and uh, her VCR broke the night before and there was no VCR. So I had to go find a VCR in my house to bring over to her house and uh, go Do they into know what VCR is there? Video cassette recorder. It was these tapes about this big yeah. and uh, you VHS tapes. VHS tapes. Yeah, some people will know what that is. It was a way to watch movies and I put, Long before streaming. Yes. Long Stre before DVDs. Stre that's right. No <laughs> DVDs, no streaming. We had VHS. So yeah. I, uh, I animated my proposal. It was a cartoon of me holding the ring and proposing to her. And so I, you know, I come over to her place, I bring the VCR up because she thinks, oh, he's gonna show me animation pieces. Cause I was making a movie at that point for my final project. She goes, oh, okay, this would be cool. Mm. And I put it in and it said, you know, will you marry me? And dead silence, <laughs> the face was like, huh? And it's like, oh crap. You know when you're sinking, you're sinking, you're going, okay, okay, maybe if I play it again, she'll get it. So I did it again, nothing. No response whatsoever. And I thought, oh crap. Okay, so let's take the ring. I said, give her, show her the ring, show her the ring. Get on the knee, do that. Maybe she'll get it at that point. So I did it. <laughs> Still no response. I was actually <laughs> happily in shock. I said, so, well, will ya? <laughs> and you said, well, well yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that was our proposal story. Yeah. Yes. It was beautifully done. I was just very surprised didn't and work in shock. First, I didn't but... think it was going to happen <laughs> for a few months. So there you go. <laughs> oh, man. But it was a good thing. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Oh, my sweetheart. Over 25 years later. Well, yeah, and 28 years that we've known each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of rock and roll. So, I told the story about Barry Manilow and Megadeth. Yeah. And I took her to Iron Maiden too. She didn't like Iron Maiden. And that was Iron Maiden we went, for sure. We went to see Kiss. We've seen, we've seen quite a few concerts in our time. We've seen Rush, we've seen Kiss, we've seen... Jackal. Jackal, that was great. Megadeth. Um, Megadeth. Um, I think that's it. I think those, and then I'd seen the ones, Cher. I went to see Cher, I went yeah. to see Barry Manilow. Yeah. What other ones did I see with you? A Dixie Chicks. That's right, they were really good. That was a really good, that was a really good concert. Yeah. And we saw Harry Styles. Just that's recently. right, Harry Styles. Is amazing. It was three years ago we saw yeah, it, in 2019. Fantastic. We loved that it. was really good. Actually, that was brilliant the way that was done. He's so, a really good showman. And good songs, good, mm -hmm. good, good music. We cross over on some of the music, like Rush. The lighting is not the best. Well, that's okay, that's... <laughs> You're the best. <laughs>